Hey guys, welcome back to another video and in today's video I'm pretty much redoing an old tutorial that I did in Godot 3 where I'm going to be showing you how you can do something like what you see on screen where I'm combining 2D and 3D to create a more immersive uh, start screen for our games and I'm actually going to be showing you how you can do this in the latest version of Godot 4. So without further ado, let's jump right into this video. So as you can see here, I already have the start menu created, but I am going to be showing you how you can uh, create it from the very beginning. And to get started, we want to go ahead and add a new scene by clicking this plus icon up here. So add a new scene and then I'm going to do control A and I want to start by adding a canvas layer node as the main node of this new scene. Then I'm just going to rename this to whatever I want. In this case, I'm just going to call it menu. As a child of the menu, I want to add a control node. And then with the control node still selected in the top here, there's a drop down option, which is the anchor preset options. And I want to select the full screen or not full screen, but full rect option. And now it's basically taking up the entire size of our viewport here, uh, our control node that is. Now with the control node still selected, I want to do control A and I want to add a margin container node. Then same thing, click on the drop down and do full rack. Now it's taking up the entire size. And then with it still selected in the inspector, I want to go over to theme overrides constraints and then turn all this on here. So margin left, margin top, right, bottom and so forth. Now I come from a web dev and web design background and in web dev this is pretty much padding. In Godot it's called margin for some reason, but this is essentially adding padding. So if for our margin left we can do something like 64, for margin top we can do 80, let's have the left and right be the same, so 64 and then margin bottom it's going to be the same as the top, so 80. Now you can't really see what this does until I actually add another node as a child of the margin container. So let's go ahead and do that. So control A and we're going to add a VBox container node as a child of our margin container. And now as you can see, there's some padding on the top, left, right, and bottom. And like I said, in Godot, it's called margin. So that's what margin container pretty much does. It makes it so that whatever we add as a child of the margin container doesn't, you know, span all the way to the edges. It gives us some spacing between the edges. Anyway, with the VBox container selected, we can actually finally start adding some text to our menu here. So we want to add a label container. And then with the label still selected in the inspector in the text field, I want to add a game title. I know I'm very creative, right? So I'm just going to keep it as game title. And then in the inspector still, I want to go over to the theme overrides drop down, open that up and then go over to fonts and then click on empty and then I'm going to click on load and then I'm just going to load a uh, font that I already imported in this project and that's my Sora font right here. So you can pretty much just go ahead and download a font from online. Uh, make sure that you can actually use it though on your projects uh, and then just pretty much load it and use it here. It's pretty much that easy and then that's a bit too small so I'm going to change the font size to 62 so that it looks good to me and I don't want it to basically take up the entire width of my VBUX container so I'm going to have it selected and then click on this drop down up here which is the sizing settings for children of a container node. And basically in Godot 3 we had uh, sizing flags so this is pretty much uh, what we use in Godot 4 instead. So we have alignment options so in this case I'm going to do horizontal alignment and I want to set it to shrink uh, begin. So if I click on that, as you can see, now it's taking uh, the actual size that it needs. It's not expanding the entire width. So that's good. Now, um, also, I do want to mention that in an actual game, instead of, you know, just doing uh, styling everything with the female rights like I did for the label here, you would most likely want to actually create a custom theme by going over to theme, empty, and then new theme. And actually, instead of doing it on the label, you would want to do that on your main control node. 
So on the main control node, you would want to do fame empty and then new thing and then specify all the styling uh, for that fame and use that on your uh, menus. But in this case, I'm going to keep everything simple and just use the theme overrides options. Anyway, with that said, uh, with the VBox container selected, I want to start adding my buttons. So go ahead and add a button node and then we can add some text. So start game. And now I'm just going to style it by going to theme overrides. I'm going to start in the styles drop down. And then for this, I'm just going to click empty and then set it to new style box empty for everything here. I don't want it to have any box or background or border. So I'm just going to set it to style box empty so that we just have text and I don't want it to expand the entire width. So again, I'm going to click up on this drop down up here and then do a horizontal alignment of shrink begin. And I was just taking the size it needs. And let's change the font to the same font we use for the title. So load my custom font that I added, font size, let's make it bigger to 30 pixels. That looks good to me. Uh, let's specify some colors. So I'm, like, I'm going to keep the default color, but I am going to change the pressed and hover colors. So for hover, I want it to be a yellowish color. So I actually have some recent colors that I used on my uh, uh, test start menu that I already made. So I'm just going to use this yellow color. You can use whatever color you want. And then for the press, I'm going to have it uh, use the orange color that I have here. So now when we hover our button, it's going to, the text is going to have a yellow color. And then when we actually press on it, it's going to have an orange color. So that looks good to me. And then I can just do control D to duplicate it. And once more, so now I have three buttons. So for my second button, I want the text to be settings. And then for my last button, I'm going to have this say quit. And that looks good. Now I want some spacing between my game title and my buttons. And to do that, I can pretty much select my VBox container, do control A, and I want to add a margin container and then bring and click and drag the margin container between the label and button nodes. And now it's between the game title and the start game button and the inspector. I'm going to go over to theme overrides constraints and then I could do it this way by using the margins, but actually I think it would be better by just going over to layout instead. And then in here we have a property for custom minimum size and we can set a custom minimum size on the Y to something like 80 pixels. And now we have 80 pixels uh, margin between the uh, game title and our buttons. So that looks good to me. Now I am going to go ahead and rename some of these nodes so that it makes more sense on what they are. So the label is going to be my game title. Our button here is going to be our start button. Our second button is going to be our settings button. And then our last button is going to be my quit button. So there we go. So that's the actual interface side of things. Now for the actual 3D, to add 3D, we want to go ahead and select our main node, do control A, and we're going to look for a node 3D. Now in Godot 3, this would be a spatial node, uh, but in Godot 4, it's called node 3D. So let's just go ahead and rename it to uh, background because this is going to be the background of our start menu. And basically what we want to do with the background selected is we want to start building our 3D scene or import our 3D scene as a child of it. So since I already have a 3D scene that it created, I can just go ahead and instance it, instance it as a child of our background. So control shift A and then I'm going to instance in my 3D level, which is this here pretty much where I just pretty much imported a uh, model that I got online. And actually, I got this model from Marco. I believe that was the creator's name. I will be leaving a link in the description uh, where you can go ahead and check out uh, the model for yourself as well as see what license it is and see the license details. So you will find that in the description. Uh, but with that said, now that I have this 3D scene imported, to actually make it visible for our menu. As you can see, it's not visible right now. To make it visible, we want to select the background and do control A. And we want to add a viewport. Or in this case, it would actually be called a sub viewport container. 
Now we are getting an error here or an alert, and that's because our sub viewport container wants a sub viewport as a child of it. In Godot 3, it would be a viewport. Now for the sub viewport container with it selected, right now it's only taking up this little spacing that you see here. So we want to click on the uh, anchor presets option and then do full rect so that it takes up the entire size. And let's actually see what the size of it is. So by going to layout transform and it's set to 1280 by 720 and we want to have our sub viewport match that size. So for the X specifies 1280 by 720 and now it's the same size as my sub viewport container. Now uh, I'm using this size because in our project project settings, if I go over to window, you can see that I set the viewport width and viewport height to 1280 by 720. And then I also made sure that we have our aspect to keep and cabins items so that we can actually resize our viewport and full screen and so forth. Uh, but with that done, uh, we still can't see our 3D scene and that's because we need to add a camera to our sub viewport node. Now I could go ahead and just do control A and then add a camera 3D. But in this case, I'm just going to go to my original start menu. Select the camera that I have there, right click on it and then do copy, go to my new menu and then just do paste on the sub viewport. And the reason I did that is because I pretty much uh, already positioned the camera where I wanted on the original menu. So by doing it this way, it's already has that same position. And I can see that by doing control two and now I have two viewports essentially. And then on the second viewport at the bottom, I can do preview for my camera. And this is the view our camera sees. And you can actually position your camera easier this way. Also, you can move it around if you want. So now with that, we should be able to see our 3D scene, but now we can't see our game title or buttons and that's because of the drawing order. So we want to actually click on our background and move it to the top before our control node. And now it's actually behind our game title and buttons. And that's pretty much all you need if you just want to have a 3D scene with your uh, 2D uh, title and buttons. Uh, but that spice things up a little bit more by adding some animation. So go ahead and select the menu and do control A and let's add an animation player node. It's a child of it. Then with the animation player node selected, we can click on animation new and then we can just make a new animation called camera anime like so. And then let's make it be four seconds. And then we can select our camera. And then with the camera selected in the inspector, we can go over to transform position and then we see a key icon. So we're going to click on that key icon and then we're going to create, uh, just click create here. And that creates a uh, keyframe for our animation. So that's going to be our starting position. And then at one second, we want to move our camera a little bit to the left. And like I said, this comes in handy with having two viewports and you can get that by doing control two on your keyboard. So let's move our camera a little bit to the left like so. And then let's make sure that we click on the key icon again in the inspector under position. So now we have that keyframe. Let's go to two seconds. Let's move it up a bit. Same thing. Click on the key icon. And actually not rotate. Make sure that you do it for position, not rotation. All right, three seconds now. And let's move it uh, back to having it somewhat centered and then click on the key icon once more. And that's going to be our animation. Now I want this to autoplay on load. So click on this option that you see here. And then we can also want this to loop by turning on animation looping. And now we press play. This is our animation that we're going to have, but it's a little bit too fast. So we're going to decrease the speed by selecting the animation player. And then in the inspector, you have a speed scale property. We're going to change this from one to something like 0.2. And now you can see that that slows down the animation. So now I can select my control node and this is pretty much what we're going to be seeing in our menu. Now you can see that there's a bunch of jittering and jagged lines to help improve that. You can go to your project settings uh, and then mess with the um, the options here that you have for like anti aliasing and uh, camera rendering and so forth. Or you can also select your uh, sub viewport 
and then with the sub viewport selected you can go over to rendering and then turn some of these uh, options on here such as the MSAA 3D option for anti-aliasing uh, so let's just turn that to the highest so that's that's a little bit better uh, we can turn on use TAA that looks better also and I use the banding and so forth so you can mess with these options here that are available to you uh, to get a better result it's gonna be uh, dependent on how you want it basically so just mess around with these options and see what works best for your game and with that we're pretty much done here that's but I want to do one last thing and that's actually add some post-processing and to do that I want to add a world environment node now I could add a world environment node as a child of my background or if I select my camera you will notice that there's actually an environment option here property set to empty where we can actually specify an environment as well here but in this case I'm just going to use a world environment node by adding it to my background as a child so do control a with the background selected and search for world environment so there we go we're getting an alert because we need to define or specify an environment uh, resource so click on empty and then in this case uh, I'm gonna do load but in your case you might want to do new environment and then actually create a new environment resource in this case I already have one so I'm gonna do environment.tress and then here's my environment I can go ahead and click on the environment option once more and then these are all the options that I pretty much set like I said you can go ahead and create a new environment and then just mess with all these different post-processing options that are available to you to get the result that you want now in this case I'm not too sure why uh, in my scene here uh, it's the the environment is super bright uh, when and it's actually a bit different on the start menu so if I actually run it and let me actually make sure that I save it it's not actually all that bright as you see here so I'm not too sure why it's different uh, on my actual uh, 3DC here but on my uh, game title or not my game title but on my start menu for my game and I think it looks just fine uh, so there you go that's pretty much does it so uh, we have our uh, 3D scene as part of our menu and I, I think it just adds a lot more uh, to our start menus and it's pretty easy to do as you saw there. Now uh, none of the uh, buttons actually work here and that's because I didn't actually add a script uh, to my uh, to my menu here but to make them work definitely go ahead and attach a script and then add some uh, signals so some um, uh, unpressed signals to you know uh, redirect the user to a new level or open up a pop-up with all the settings or quit the game it's, it's so I'm not actually gonna be showing you how to do that in this video I just wanted to focus on actually you know combining the 3d to, and 2d to create a more immersive menu such as this but uh, yeah, uh, anyway, uh, with that said, like I said, we're pretty much done here. Uh, if you liked the video, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing. And I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, have a wonderful day.